Hi guys, it's uh, Charlie here at Sterling Power. This video is going to be a troubleshooting video for the ProBat Ultra, Sterling's latest battery to battery charger. Uh, this particular model is the 12 volt 60 amp model, so it's 12 volt in, 12 volt out. Uh, we've also got 30 amp models at 12 volt and we have a range of 24 volt models as well. So this video will cover all of those particular variants within the model range. Um, but I'm just going to be using the 12 volt 60 amp as a particular example so you can um, scale up the voltages to meet your requirements simply by doubling them okay for the 24 volt um, so yeah this is a troubleshooting video for Sterling's latest ProBat Ultra battery to battery charger right guys here I have a wired up ProBat Ultra 12 volts in and that's being provided by we've just put a uh, Pro Charge Ultra here to provide the 14 or so volts simulating uh, alternator input. Um, so this is essentially your alternator and your starter battery feeding in the 12 volts or 14 volts to the input terminal on the battery to battery charger. We've then got a common negative and then we've got the output voltage going here to what would essentially be your service battery or your auxiliary battery. Um, so it's input battery, output battery. Okay, now the first thing to check, again, it's always about voltages. So if you're having any problems with your battery to battery charger, measure what your input voltage is. Now, in order for the battery to battery charger to fire up, you need over 13.6 volts. Once you've gone over 13.6 volts, you can then go below it, down all the way to about 12 volts, if it's uh, sort of in default mode. But it's just getting above that 13.6 volt horizon uh, is the uh, initial issue. So here I've got 14.6 volts coming in and we've got 14.3 volts going out. So it's essentially taking in a high voltage and putting out a more conservative voltage to keep that battery uh, at its correct charging profile. If I was to drop the input voltage down to 13.8, it would still maintain a 14.4 volt output to the service battery. So the whole point of this charger is to take in essentially any input voltage at a 12 volt range and then put out a consistent 14 and a half volts or so to keep the service battery topped up. Now, if you're not getting that output voltage, there are several things that you can try um, in order to uh, fix the problem. Right guys, what I've done now is I've turned on our supposed alternator slash input battery. So that then is firing through to this here onto the input terminals of the Burbat Ultra and we're getting a healthy 14.1 volts. So that's replicating what an alternator's input voltage would have on the Probat Ultra. Now the output is I've tested it nicely connected up to these batteries here and you can tell that by we've got 12.6 volts on the output terminal. Now you may get this situation where you've got a healthy 14 volts in but there's no boost on the output. You may just have uh, battery voltage. So the continuity is absolutely fine but there's an issue with this particular charger. So to remedy that situation hold down both, this is, a, this is the first thing to try for example, hold down both setup, enter and select buttons for about six seconds and let go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, let go. Little LED halos around the, the, the buttons will flash indicating what one second looks like. Now the LED displays have now changed what was essentially the, the issue there, and we can now measure what the output voltage is. We're now at 14.3, so now we've got boost. So we've got 14.0 in, and we've got 14.34 out. Uh, and now you've got healthy input voltage here because it's in the green, healthy output voltage there. So the charger is boosting voltage into the service battery. So the issue with the first, uh, problem is that the unit was turned off uh, and by holding these buttons down for six seconds I have now turned the unit back on again. So if you've been fiddling around with these buttons here you may have inadvertently turned the battery to battery charger off 
and by holding those buttons down for approximately five to six seconds and letting go, the charger then fires back up again. Okay, so that's the first thing to try. Second thing to try, <clears throat> let's say in this example you've got healthy input voltage at about 14 or so volts, but your output voltage is not in boost, even though you've just turned the engine on and you're, you're down at 13.5 volts and it's not rising. So you're stuck at 13.5 volts and very little current is flowing through to your batteries. You might be like, well, this can't be in constant, constant current mode because there's no change, there's no flow, flow through of current. A uh, couple of things might be going on here. There may be a small load on the battery, but however, that's very, very unlikely uh, because this is a big, powerful unit, so it should be able to supplement that, no problem. The chances are that, again, these buttons have been fiddled with and you've been put down into float mode. As you can see, this float LED is on, this blue one here. Uh, in order to get it out of float mode, simply hold down these two buttons for a couple of seconds. So one, two, let go. LED now goes over to bulk boost mode. And then let's see what the output voltage goes up to now. So you're now looking at 14.1, 14.2, 14.3. So the unit has now been taken out of float mode accidentally and then put back to, to where it should be, um, which is back into bulk boost. Now, just to confirm, I have not forced this unit into bulk boost. I've simply just taken it out of it being accidentally put into float mode because you can force this charger to be put into float mode, uh, which may have accidentally happened simply by holding these buttons down for a couple of seconds. I'll demonstrate. So I can put it back into forced to float mode by simply holding these two buttons down. One, two, and then that float light comes on and the voltage on the output is now collapsing down to 13.5, okay? So to put it back, hold these two down, a couple of seconds, then you're back into bulk and then the output voltage should slowly climb. Right, okay, so we're back up to 14.2, 14.3 on the output. Um, okay, that's the second thing. Right guys, the third thing to try, let's say you are getting healthy voltage in, example 14 volts in, and you're getting a healthy voltage out, 14.3 volts or so. Let's just assume you're getting that, but you find that you've bought a 60 amp charger, but you're only getting 25, 30 amps through the product. Uh, and you've tried to put a load on the service battery to try and increase the current flowing through here to try and get to that 60 amp figure. What may have happened accidentally, and this is what we, we find from time to time, is that the unit has been accidentally put into half power mode. Now, to get it out of half, half power mode, you simply hold this setup enter button down for two seconds. And then after those two seconds, simply let it go and then measure what current's flowing through it. You'll find that the amount of current flowing through the unit has now doubled. Okay, so holding this button down by two seconds will force the unit into half power mode and then simply pushing those two buttons again for two seconds, letting go, uh, will take it out of half power mode. Okay, there is also a night mode option, uh, which is, a, a, in terms of the current flowing through it, it's similar, but it's holding the select button down by a couple of seconds. So that may have accidentally been activated as well. Easily done because the buttons are very tempting to press and they're very low in terms of uh, time thresholds on them. So, you know, it's quite simple. It's quite easy just to hold that down two seconds, for example, and the unit is now in half power mode. So just take it back out of that. Now, if all of these uh, different uh, options are a bit complicated and you just want to sort of reset the entire unit, you can just hold down both buttons for 30 seconds, just slightly over 30 seconds, let's say 31, 32 seconds, let go, um, and then press both buttons again to confirm and then let go. Um, but I would always consult a good page in the, in the, in the um, instruction manual is page six, the quick installation guide. Um, there's a table down here with what all of the, the different buttons do. Um, and if all else fails, just reset the charger to default. All right. Okay, guys, if, and this will be the final one, if you're getting healthy input voltage, but you're not getting healthy output voltage, you're just getting 12.5 volts, for example. 
check these three green connectors down here. These are your operational mode connectors. The default, i.e. where it comes out of the box, there should be a little bridge connector between the top one out of the three and the middle one. This, if, if this is connected, um, then it will just fire up in automatic mode. Don't worry about it. But if there's no wires in here at all, you need to ensure that there's a bridge connector between the top one and the middle one here. If you've got a bridge between the top one and the bottom one, i.e. no connection in the middle, you will require adding a live ignition on the middle one in order to activate the unit. You are then in low voltage operational mode. Um, the third thing would be to, if, if you've removed this bridge connector altogether uh, and you've got a just a live feed on its own, the unit will also operate then. But another thing to also always check is that you've got a connection of some form down here that complements what it says in the instruction manual. Uh, so yeah, that would be one thing to check. Sometimes these fall out or they just get taken out for whatever reason. If there's nothing in there whatsoever, the charger simply won't operate. You can have whatever voltage you want, whether albeit healthy, on the input and you won't be getting anything on the output because it requires... Um, some connection down there in order for it to operate. So there are four things there. I'll run through them briefly. They are check what your input voltage is, ensure you've got continuity between uh, the, the output battery and the output of the battery to battery charger. Ensure you haven't accidentally got the unit turned off. I told you how to remedy that situation. Ensure that the charger hasn't accidentally been put down into float mode or night mode for that matter. They're both similar in terms of their operation. And ensure also that you've got the right connector down here in the operational mode connectors. Ensure you've got a bridge connector or an ignition feed of some form. Okay, so there'll be the four things to check in order that you've got your uh, uh, battery to battery charger operating okay. And finally, don't forget, you can reset the battery to battery charger to default by holding down both buttons for over 30 seconds um, and then letting the buttons go and then pressing them and holding them again for a couple of seconds and that should confirm it. Lights will go um, in particular sequence to demonstrate something's happened. The unit will turn off and fire up again and it will be reset to default. Okay, thank you.